Well, we have people filing the room. I'm Gary Dehart, and this is David uh, David Leary, who will be our speaker. But uh, we'll give people a couple of about a minute or so just to get logged in. Um, so I always like to start off with a question that has absolutely no bearing on uh, what we're about to talk about or what David's about to teach on. So we'll start with this is probably too easy for you, but what's the best city you visited lately? Oh, best city I visited lately. Uh, I would have to say. Um... I went to the Arborello two days ago in Italy. Oh, so you were just, just in Italy. It's wow. just in Italy. Yes. So yeah. just got back last night, actually. But the Arborello has those truly houses. And they're all, each house is almost like its own ecosystem. So they take the bricks they dig out for the well. Okay. And they use that to build the house. So now the house is built on top of its own well. And then you get the fire and it goes to the stones. They smoke the food up in the attic and the oh. whole thing. And there's a place where the farm animals are half in and half out of build the truly. It's just like, it's like its own little ecosystem. And they had it for centuries. And the way the, the limestone is, it, it filters the air as it comes in and out. No kidding. It's, it's just, uh, it's super amazing to, to see that. Um, and and that how do you spell it? Southern Italy. It's uh, Arborello. Okay. And it's in Southern Italy. Um, close to Bari, right? If you if you have the boot and you chop off the this little pump. Okay, and then the the houses are called truly houses. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't quote me on that. This okay. <laughs> right Maybe it's probably in Italian or Latin. Yes. Might be Latin or it guess could even be Greek down there, right? But um, yeah. so who knows? All right. So then, uh, all right. One more. I've asked people today. Uh, favorite color? Which favorite color? Uh, probably blue. There we go. That seems kind of safe, but told you it has no meaning and no, no purpose, meaning. no relevance to this to today's session. So let me go ahead and kick today's session off. Let me get my uh, my cheat sheet here in front of me, and uh, we'll get this going and let David take over. So good afternoon, and thank you uh, for joining us for Insightful Accountants Future Forward Summit. My name is Gary Dehart, as I said just a minute ago. I'm the publisher of Insightful Accountant and host of the Accounting Insiders podcast and host of Future Forward Summit. This session is you can't automate your processes until you document your processes. Uh, I think no wiser words have been said. So uh, our speaker is David Leary, and I will let him introduce himself in just a minute after I cover a few housekeeping items. So this session does qualify for CPE. Just like all CPE, if uh, you must be present for 50, five zero minutes, five zero minutes, and you must answer at least three of the polling questions. We only have three, so you better answer them all if you want to get your CPE. Meet these two requirements, and we will send you an email with, within 24 hours. Moat usually goes out the same day uh, with a link to a short survey. Complete that survey, and then we'll send you your certificate. So the recording will be posted on our YouTube page, probably going to take a couple of days to get that done, but it will be posted to our YouTube page. I will put the link to the YouTube page in the chat once David takes over, and then we will also send you the link uh, in a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours as well. And if you have any questions, we ask you to put them into the Q&A panel just during the session, but, but be specific when you put your question in. Don't just say, what did you mean by that, David? He may not answer the question for five minutes, so you need to just be real specific and give him a reference point to what your question is about so that, uh, again, if it's been a few minutes, he'll know what you're talking about and we won't have to kind of go backwards. Uh, David, were you going to share the slide deck? I did not ask you that prior. Um, like share my screen? No, with with attendees. Are we going to be able to pass that along? Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a couple of hidden slides that I'll bleed out, but then do we just save it as a PDF? Yeah, just save the PDF, send it to me, and then we're going to put them all into a box folder, and we'll. Okay, send yes, I can do that. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, and we'll send that link out to everyone afterwards. So I, I failed to ask you that before, but now we know. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over, David. Thanks for being here, especially uh, you're flying in hot from from Italy, and uh, probably not a whole lot of sleep. So we appreciate it. Appreciate you taking some time. Great, thanks for having me. And whenever I can start now, oh, that looks like it's me. All so you. Jump in and share my screen here. So, your screen too. That's working, Gary. We're good. Yes. Perfect. Got it. So, title of this presentation today is "You Can't Automate Your Processes Until You Document Your Processes." Um, this is pretty much as we've gone this journey with uh, Earmark Media. Blake and I have really what we automate is really the key to everything. But we just 
quickly realizing until you document it, you can't uh, you can't take that next step and automate it. So, uh, if I, oop, why is clicking not working? Click there. We go. Got a little background on me for those of you who don't know me. Um, I am a co-founder of Earmark Media. Earmark Media is a production company, a couple kind of a, a three-headed monster to some extent. There's the Cloud Accounting Podcast. We have the Earmark app which allows people to listen to podcasts to get CPE. In the middle, we have a production company. So we're producing podcasts for other people. We're producing our own podcast. We sell ads on the podcast. So that's a lot of a lot of work that takes place in the middle. Um, prior to that, I was at Intuit for almost 22 years. Um, uh, built an app. Uh, I've been on some of the uh, top accounting people list and things like that. Uh, found my own company after I left into it. And that's been an interesting journal now, our journey right now. I'm a podcaster, a producer, an entrepreneur. And the most interesting thing for me is like, I get to be a client of accounting firms, which is kind of fun, right? Instead of just talking about a lot of this stuff in theory, I get to experience accounting firms from the other side. All my contact information is there. So you can always reach out to me. Uh, just on Twitter is probably the easiest, at David Leary. And uh, you can email me at david at davidleary.com. So poll question one, we'll just jump right in. Uh, oh, Gary, are you kicking these off or am I? I got you covered. Beautiful. So how well do you document processes at your firm? Just while people do this, David, I don't know the answer to this question, so I'm going to ask it. Okay. Is, do you have a tech background? I mean, obviously, you're into it for a long time. They're a tech company, but... Um, is that your is that your core? Technology? I mean, it's, it kind of. I mean, I started doing tech support for QuickBooks at Intuit. So I started doing tech support for QuickBooks DOS. I did five years of tech support. And mm -hmm. then from there, I got into quality assurance, a little bit of product development. I can write some code. Uh, kind of, I, I'm more like an accountant, right? That is really good with Excel. Yeah. In a way, like when you're using Excel, you're kind of coding Excel, right? You, you right. almost have an engineer brain. But when it comes to actual writing code for products, Software code, yeah, I'm a little slow and you don't need to do sure that. Thing. But, okay. but my oh, background did really come up, develop through the tech side, not the accounting side per se. Gotcha. Yeah, I got you. Okay, all right, we'll get this uh, poll closed out in about three more seconds. Three, two, two and results here. one, I'll give you the results. There you go. And can they see these results or I need to move this to the other part of the screen? They should be able to see them, yes. Okay, got it. So it looks like, most people are documenting, uh, but it's hard to maintain. Um, some people are saying absolutely nothing. So about 30% of you have absolutely nothing is documented. Another 9%, it's in my head. So a good solid 40% of you maybe don't have any documentation. And so that's what will be great about this because even myself, that's the hardest part is doing the documentation. So perfect. And now I'm back to just sharing, hopefully. Yep. Get the results. So I'll try to take a time machine to about 15 years ago or so. And it's maybe longer, but as time goes on, you forget the exact times here. But into it, back in the day of QuickBooks Desktop, they had this goal to aut create automated testing of QuickBooks Desktop software. And it was important because back in the olden days before cloud, you had to get the software perfect because you're going to put it on a CD to put in a box to put on a store shelf. So you can't really fix it once that CD is on the store shelf. So you had to have a lot of perfection prior to releasing. And so the way they went to attack it, and this is a process that took two, three, maybe four, five years, right? They took every bug historically that was ever written against QuickBooks and dumped it out into a huge spreadsheet. So it was just a big, huge spreadsheet with 30,000 tests. And it might've been multiple spreadsheets. And then they had an army of people, I was one of them, manually rewriting every one of these bugs to become a test that anybody could run. So in theory, I could give Gary a, a list of instructions and he could go execute that test. Uh, and then we, to make it more efficient, we applied you know, testing techniques to make sure the, you're hitting all the angles and the coverage and things like that. And then finally, they're ready to automate. Uh, but even that it was its own process with processes and uh, documentation and uh, priorities. But it just, it took a very, very long time to, to get to this point. But the start of it was dumping out all the bugs in the spreadsheets. Just, just starting with something. And then maybe about a decade ago or so, I was doing these uh, Intuit developer Friday morning hangouts. And these hangouts, basically every Friday, I would uh, have a guest, we'd interview them live. And at that time, 
before Zoom, this is pre-Zoom, it was a, it was actually on a Google Hangout, hence the name Hangouts, um, and eventually migrated over to Zoom. But every week to do this, by the time I invite the guests, send out calendar reminders, do some promotion on social media, eventually post it to YouTube when it's finished, uh, set up the appointment, set up the uh, webinar, if you want to call it that, in Zoom, right? It was like four and a half hours of copy, pasting, and clicking activities. It was just a drag. It was just copy this to here, copy this to here, copy this to here. And then during that time, I discovered some apps like Cross the Street and Zapier, and eventually got this down to like 15 minutes of manual work. And so what did I learn kind of in these processes? So like the first thing really is like not everything has to be documented perfectly to start an automation journey. Like dumping out just those bugs was a huge start to get the ball rolling out into it to get some tests created, right? Um, I learned if it's not deep enough for somebody else to do, you probably can't automate it. So if I so if I have some documentation and it's great, I can do it, but then I hand it to somebody else to do it and they can't complete the task, I'm probably not ever going to be able to automate it either because automation, just like a human needs individual steps, automation needs all those little baby steps as well. Um, the other thing I think I learned during these exercises is that it's okay to have some steps automated and some steps be just human intervention. So you can't do everything. Um, and that's something that I think sometimes you go on these goals of like, I want to automate everything. And then you get frustrated because you get blocked by something. But if you accept the fact that it's okay to do both, I think you'll be all right. Um, and then just admitting it's a natural cycle journey. You know, it's a little bit of polishing the stone. You're not, you're, it's never going to be perfect. So just you constantly polish a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, and just continue through the cycle and the journey on that. But like with any time you have some learnings, you take the time to step back and do some self-reflection, right? Um, one of the things I realized, I suck at documenting processes from scratch. It's, it's, I found it very similar to, hey, write a blog post and you open up the, the empty doc and you just stare at the screen. I feel like documenting processes sometimes is a lot like that. You just have an empty screen. You're like, okay, I got to document what I do. It's really hard. Um, I also suck at delegating, right? Which makes it even harder because if you, if you don't document it, you can't really delegate it. And it's almost impossible to delegate if you psychologically think you could just do it yourself, right? Uh, but I'm definitely good at refining processes and refining tasks, and I really do enjoy automating. But I just can't get to the automating part if I don't have if I suck at the documentation part at the top. So another poll question, Gary, if you want to watch that, is how do you currently document your processes? Hopefully everybody's paying attention. The poll question two is on the screen. We don't want anybody to miss it. All right, we'll go about five more seconds and then uh, I'll share the results. Three. Two and one, there we go. All right, so it looks like about half of you have something documented looking like in Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Excel, like if you put it somewhere. Not a lot of use in like SharePoint, Notion, Wiki pages, those types of tools, which are really hot for a while, right? To put all your processes in a tool like that. Um, it looks like about 24% of you are using workflow tools like Asana, Trello, Monday, and only 8% of you are using like specific task management tools like a process tool. Um, and then 6% have nothing is documented. But it looks like a lot of you have started this journey so far. So I'm going to close on that. So what I want to do is I want to just show you kind of at a high level what we're doing with Process Street in or what we're doing with Earmark in Process Street. So I'm going to bring up Process Street and kind of give you a, a behind the scenes look at how we get podcasts out the door a little bit and how deep we've gone with our automation and uh, workflows inside of Process Street. So I'm going to change screens here. Got it. So this is Process Street. This is a view of Process Street. This, in a way, is, is a report that's in Process Street. And this specific report here is really about our in-progress episodes. And episodes could be in progress from, oh, it's scheduled to be recorded, to it's been recorded, to we have to edit it, to it's approved to be released, to the ads are ready to be inserted. And all of this we manage through Process Street. 
And if I can get go, I'm going to go and switch to a completed episode here just for illustration purposes. Okay. And to get a, so for an example, the cloud accounting podcast, to get the cloud accounting podcast out the door, we have about 60 some odd steps to get that out of the door. And a lot of, and a lot of these steps, for example, have sub steps in them, right? So it, it might be 500 steps to get an episode out the door. Um, so there's all these sub steps to, to get things out the door. And we have a team of people, like you can see Blake does some of the work. I do some of the work. We have an engineer do some of the work. Uh, we have an operations manager do some of the work. So it's, so it's distributed across a team, hence that delegation, right? And we have it broken down to where it's really dynamic. So if we have a, if we have a show that doesn't, let's say, have ads, we'll hide the ads and they'll, they won't appear in a process, right? Um, the theory of that be is maybe you have clients, right? And maybe one client you don't do payroll for, so you would hide all the payroll work that you have to do for that client. Um, every task has subtasks. I talked about that. Um, and some of them are automated and some of them are automated internally. For example, every time we're done with a workflow and, and a show publishes, we send an email out to the host of the podcast or whoever we just determine we want to email that out. And so this is like automation that's built in the process street that we just send from here. Sometimes we have automation. If I go to another step here, we uh, create transcripts. And basically we're using this, uh, this product called Sonics to take the transcript of the podcast and process it and give us back the transcript. Now this step here is automated through I just blanked out Zapier. Sorry about that. So Zapier takes the transcript, passes it to Sonic. Sonic's finished it and it brings it back, right? And so those, so those are those steps are automated. So even though we have sixty steps, it's not all automated, but it is all documented. So different people can do different things. And then along the way, sometimes you have to uh, communicate, right? And it has built-in chat, which is nice. So we can always like, Deborah worked in the artwork. Here's a rough draft. Thanks. I'll change the sub subheadings, uh, and then I say thanks. And so we can have chat on the tasks themselves inside the product, right? And so we're using all of these. One thing we've, uh, as a team, we've really started to use the chat for is we have to improve a process. So you might work on a process and realize, oh, this is confusing on step five. You could just put in the chat, hey, step five is confusing, and then we'll uh, modify or, or modify or uh, improve the process from there. Um, somebody asked in the notes that, how it's how process street is different from ClickUp. ClickUp tends to, I think, is doing a little bit more processes, but I, I think ClickUp is a little bit more project driven, if that makes sense, versus repeatable tasks that are the same every single time. Um, I, I kind of put ClickUp more in the workflow bucket, and less of the actual a set of processes that have to be done or a check. It, it, it's less like a checklist, right? In a way, it can do some checklist stuff. Um, and it has other features like a Trello board, things like that. But I don't think it's as comparable to something like a process street. Um, the other thing that's cool about process street is like some of these can kick off other tasks. So we do CPE for a podcast. So we basically, this can kick off a whole other process that somebody else has to do to create the CPE courses. We have social media videograms. So like those little video clips you see like on TikTok, things like that. We create all those and those will show up other places. Um, we have to, team member that works on those. The actual um, uh, publishing it or uh, final production, maybe on YouTube, there's tasks for that. So a lot of these things can create subtasks and kick these off somewhere else. And then the other big thing we're using in Process Street, I'm gonna go back to the library. Where I get to this, at? I always forget one second here. Nope. I'm gonna edit a workflow. I'm sort of getting into an editing of a workflow. And hey, tables are here. No, they're not here either. Sorry. Oh, here it is data sets. Sorry about that. So there's this concept of data sets. And so we do these for our podcast episodes, right? And And so all the shows that we have a pod, that we do a podcast for are all listed here, right? And when we list those out here, we basically 
track what's happening in that podcast. Okay. And so this would be your clients. Like, yes, there's payroll. No, we don't do sales tax. You know, all these specifics could be a list of clients and all your data is in here. And then when we use this, what it does is it controls the workflow run. So if I was to have a new workflow, I'm going to do a new for a workflow. We're going to do a podcast episode. Demo during webinar. So now I have this workflow. So this is the like, first show, whatever podcast show this is. But if you notice, there's nobody assigned to it. It is only, you know, how many steps right now? This one's only 43 steps right? Because we don't know what we're doing on this episode. So all, our, all of our processes have a configuration workflow. And this configuration workflow is driven by that table that I just showed. So when I choose a podcast, like the Cloud Accounting Podcast, for example, it's going to take a moment. It's going to, to populate all of these fields, like who the show is owners are, who the recording engineers are. If it's going to need ads, it's going to populate all these. And as it populates this in, it populates the spreadsheet now, right? So that's done. Um, for example, select ads, there's a step in select ads. So if this podcast has an A slot and a B slot that I have to complete, it's going to add those dynamically based on the, the other work I've done on that process, right? And then inside each process, there's additional steps I can track down you know, off the thing. But it's really, it's all, so it's very dynamic based on those tables to configure your workflow specific to each, um, each client, et cetera. So I'm going to move back to my presentation. And the, re and the reason I wanted to give you an overview is like everybody's talking about like how they document processes and I'm going to share kind of what I do or what we're doing here at Earmark to document our processes. Um, oh, sorry, I missed Janice asked me about zooming in. I will do that right now in Process Street. I only wanted to not zoom when I did the first report. And I forgot. I do apologize for that. So let me zoom in right now so I don't forget on the second part of the demo. Back into presentation. So keep going back to that self reflection thing. It's great to have all that stuff automated. That all that stuff documented, right? And assigning it and delegating to teams. But it ultimately goes back to like documenting process from scratch. I just suck at it, right? And so I think what we should do together, let's, I'm sick of running our weekly payroll. So together, let's document it so we can hand it off to somebody else to audit it. All right, so let me change screens here. And I'm going The library and get back to nothing. All right, so is this zoomed in enough? Can people just put in the chat a little thumbs up or? Gary, does it seem like it's okay? It does to me, and I'm on a laptop, so. Um, and uh, Janice says it is better, so. Got it. All right, so there's a couple of small questions came in about process street we could probably get to really quickly here. Um, do the workflow steps get allocated to each person via email or do they have to be in the process street app? Um, yes, you, you can get emails, but to do the work, you do have to be in the process. Well, they can do the work anywhere, but you're going to be in process street to check it off. So there's like a checklist app, um, just like if you had Excel and you had a column for them to check off the steps they do, they have to actually open up Excel to do that. That's the same thing with process street. They do actually have to open up the app to do that. Um, so let me ask you if it has a process monitoring tool so you can look at the metrics, cost time to produce each podcast. They do, they do not have a lot of metrics tools like that. Um, they send out these crazy emails like every so often, like you saved so many hours last month. I don't know how to get these, these numbers. I don't know where that comes from. But yeah, it does not have uh, those types of numbers. But what you'll, you'll, you can definitely measure it more in indirect ways. And really the best way to do it is how much work are you doing? 
right? Can you, we had a podcast and production things that uh, Blake and I can step back from. We don't, we're not involved at all, right? And so it's, it's almost like self-running, but the only reason self-running is because we've documented everything in our brain into there. So anybody can do those processes. Um, so Janice said the Zoom's better. Yes, yes, it's good. Okay, got it. And I didn't miss any other questions here. Perfect. All right. So let's move on. So like I said, I want to stop running my weekly payroll. Uh, a couple of different ways to do this. I want to create a process to do this. And I want to use a couple of different tools so you can kind of get a feel of maybe different ways we can create this process because it is a little daunting. Like, give me all the steps to run your weekly payroll, right? So I can possibly automate it. I don't know where to start. It's a little, it's a little tricky. So first of all, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to do a new workflow, create one from scratch using Process Street. So let me do that. And Process Street has now added an AI template to do my documentation. So I'm gonna create, generate a new process with AI. And it's working away here. All right, so it's asking the name. So the name's really important because this is what it's going to use to, um, run, to to use to create the actual process. So I'm going to say run weekly payroll. Generate with AI and give it a second here. And while that's working, I'm going to use ChatGPT and ask for the same, uh, something similar. Documents the steps needed to run my weekly payroll. Oops. So both are working side by side, um, and I'm just doing that so it's when we go back to ChatGPT, I have something I can get and copy over. All right, and so if we look at what Process Street's doing here on the left, as it's creating not not just a list the way ChatGPT is over here on the right, Process Street's actually creating all the fields and the steps in Process Street, right? Is it correct? No, but remember when we dumped 30,000 bugs out of QuickBooks? It wasn't correct either, but it was a starting point, right, to, to work from. So we'll give this like, to uh, keep working here on the left. Uh, and it looks like ChatGPT is done. It looks like Process Street's AI is uh, assuming I'm doing all the math and the work and not using a payroll service, but this is nice because we can modify and change if we need to. Okay, so in, what was that? A minute, 45 seconds? I've just documented and have processes to run payroll inside of Process Street, right? Is it correct? Is it perfect? No, is it the right for my firm? Maybe, maybe not, but that's where I can start entering that, that phase of refining, right? Over and over again and refining that. I'm actually going to go back one folder and I'm going to um, do this again. I'm going to just uh, create it with, create it with Russia Street AI. Let's save on this one. Back to here. I'm actually going to do a new workflow, but I'm going to do a blank workflow. Uh, New workflow, we're just going to do start from scratch. All right, I'm going to work from this workflow because I think I want to um, use maybe this one from ChatGPT instead. So I'm going to grab, grab this. You'll see. Actually, I'm going to. So I'm going to um, have it just give me the bold words. Just give me the words in bold as a list. All 
I just make it my control C. I'm gonna paste that into here. There we go. So let's paste it in. I'm gonna delete some of these this empty step out of the way here for a moment. Okay. So with every payroll, um, the first, you kind of have those uh, the get the hours steps, right? You got to get the hours from your employees. I actually get the hours from, from a text, right? So I text my employees to get the hours. So here I'm going to just um, put in a subtask, right? So I'm going to uh, text employees to get hours. And I'm going to... Um, and text asking how many hours. I don't talk, type very well when I'm presenting. <laughs> hours were worked. Okay, and then I'm going to subtask of that. It's going to be um, wait for wait for responses. Okay. Um, so it's, I use a payroll service like OnPay, so I probably don't need to, all these calculation things, right? So I'm going to just call this. Um, fund payroll. Got it. Got it. And I'm going to get rid of some of these other tasks, right? I don't need to calculate deductions, deletes. I don't need to calculate net pay, delete. Um, but for example, I probably, for Process Street, I probably need to log into Process Street, right? I'm sorry, Process Street, um, into Ante. So Log into run pay and then run payroll and not pay. That's what I do every week. I get the hours, then I log into on pay and I put the payroll in. So unfortunately, I don't have any sub steps in on pay. So let me try this. Let me try to uh, um, how do I yeah, how do I log into on pay payroll? And I don't know how perfect these instructions are, right? And that's okay, because that's what the refine steps are for. And that's what when you delegate this and assign it to your team, and you can, okay, I think that's good. So I'm gonna grab this here. This looks, this looks reasonable to me. I think it's kind of close. I'm gonna put this in a subtask. There's some of these extra paste lines that get put in there. And so now, if somebody needs to run payroll, they can just log in on pay. All the instructions on how to log in are, are listed here. And then let's see how to run payroll on pay. How to run a weekly payroll on pay. Let's see what ChatGPT says here. Fortunately, I, even though it's ChatGPT is pretty fast at this, I think when you're doing a, a webinar like this, it's still not fast enough, right? Like I wish it was a little bit faster. But uh, all right, so I'm going to grab this. It looks like, whoops. I'm having some scrolling issues. There we go. All right. Here. So I probably don't need to log into OnPay because we already have that it's in the previous step. So I'm going to create some steps for this. Okay. 
So even some of these blink steps are just in the way here. All right, all right. So now I can give this to somebody, say run the payroll. I kind of have instructions on getting the, the hours, right? Uh, gathering the hours, send the text to get the hours, send the text, wait for responses, logging it on pay. Now somebody can go in there, they can sign in, the instructions are here. Now, I probably wouldn't put a password in here, right? Maybe there's a step on, you know, contact David for the password, right? And then they're gonna run the payroll inside of OnPay, right? And this is the click by click, pretty much the high level things. Um, I probably don't need to generate pay slips, right? So we're gonna delete that. Let's delete that. Um, probably, I don't know what process payments means, we're gonna delete that. We get the record keeping for free. Report payroll taxes, that's interesting. Um, that's done by the payroll service, but sometimes we have to do it quarterly. I'm gonna leave that for right now. Um, but one thing that I definitely have to do every time I run the payroll, I have to move money, right? I need to move money from the payroll, the operating checking into the payroll account. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a new, a new step in here. So it's a new task. Okay, and this is going to be move. Money to payroll. Yeah. And I want to give some instructions to do that as well. So one of the things I have to do when I do that. Sorry, everything's running a little slow with the Zoom. There we go. All right. So one of the things I have to do is I have to log into Relay Financial. And then the other thing I need to do is actually transfer the money. All right, so again, I want to log into Relay. So I'm going to, I need steps to do that for somebody. Open this up. Um, well, that's working. Somebody asked why I was using um, ChatGPT and the AI and Process Street. Um, different AIs do different things. And I just want to illustrate that you have these different options. I also have another tab open where I have Bing's chat. So there's different, you're going to get different results from different AIs. And you could actually use combinations of them. Uh, I just wanted to, um, I just, it's for me, I feel like copy and pasting sometimes is easier when it comes to editing because the AI and process you just documented way too much and then think it was going to be good for demoing per se. Okay. Um, so it's like, here's the steps. I'm going to grab these, control C, subtask. All right. So you kind of get the picture, right? We're, and then I could go and create subtasks for the other payroll amounts. So then I can assign these. Like if I'm going to, maybe I always have Norm on my team to do these. So I'm going to always assign this step to Norma on my team. And she's always going to do this step every time. Every time we run payroll, she's going to go and do the move, the transfer out of the checking account. Um, maybe for me, I'm going to do the uh, review and approval at the end. Right. And I can assign these to me. And so that step is assigned to me to, to, to run the payroll. So I'm gonna I'm gonna publish this. Give me a moment here to publish. Um, well, that's publishing. Somebody's asking about reordering the procedures or changing the procedures. That's thank you, Tammy. I'm about to just jump into that. Got it. Uh, another question just somebody asked if Chat GPT is part of Process Street. I suspect there are possibly using chat GPT at the API level. So process street is going out talking to, to chat GPT and then coming back and doing their own work on top of the results that chat GPT has given it back. All right, so this is what it looks like when I'm actually running the payroll. So, oops, run workflow, my, my fault. I didn't actually saved it. All right, so this will be, what is today? Uh, May 23rd, payroll. Okay, and this is due on. We got to run that by the end of tomorrow because I'll miss the 
direct deposit deadline. Okay, so updating hours, I'm gonna send the text. Let's assume or pretend the employees got back to me. Maybe with response and then I complete the text. The text. And then I'll log in on pay, right? I can run the payroll. So all the steps along the way are all here and I can check mark them. But let's just say, for example, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. You have to review and approval way down at the bottom, right? And that needs to be higher up in the process, right? So depending on the permission levels you give your team, right? Some of your team can actually just edit the workflow and fix this themselves. But I feel like your best practice is to send a message to you know whoever is on the team I'm not going to send it to anybody right now, though, and be like, hey, this step feels like it is in the wrong space, wrong spot. We should move it to uh, before record keeping. All right. And then what we usually do is we, um, We'll have meetings about things sometimes to clarify quickly. And then it's very easy to edit. So I'm going to change show minute, edit workflow. So now I'm editing my task and I'm just going to drive that and I want it to be above record keeping. Right? And just put that in there. You can also move steps around. For example, let's say I discover run payroll, um, maybe distribute pay stubs is a little bit deep, or actually that's not the best example. Um, let's see, like on pay, I'm trying to think of an easy way. Oh, I, I know, okay. I created this step, but maybe I really want a second, a different one. I'm gonna do a new task. And maybe, maybe this is email employees instead. I can actually take a task. So I so I can save work. So instead of having to do this a second time, I can actually copy this. I can move it to the other task or I could duplicate it, right? Um, so I could do a, let's do a duplicate first. Apologize for the, the spinning circles here. It's okay, so now I copied that, but I don't need this step twice here. So I'm gonna actually move this step, this whole section, to another task. I'm gonna move this to the email employees for hours. So now maybe I want to do both, right? So maybe some employees I'm gonna text, some I'm gonna do emails for, and I'm gonna do and save and publish this. Publish. And then every time you publish any changes, you can have it apply to all your workflows or just apply it to a specific workflow. Be, the Just a watch out on this. When we, if you have by default assigned people, when you update the workflow, if you've overridden any of the assignments, it'll put them back to the original assignments. So that's why you want to have some control on what you update or don't update. But I could care less today. I'm just going to update my workflow. Got it. Turn to workflow. Okay, so what we really did here is we just documented, we now have processes that the base level documentation is here. Is it perfect? I don't know, we're going kind of fast right now just by using these, these tools, but hopefully the takeaway for you is you don't have to start from that blank slate. You can use tools to create the base level of your processes. And then like ChatGPT doesn't know that I use Relay, right? To move my money to between the payroll account and the other account, so I can, create a step and create those processes for that. And I get more and more and more control. Like maybe um, I have a, maybe I build this out and I have things that I only do every once a month or every quarter. And I can have those configured to only appear every month or every quarter, for example. Um, 
um, I'm going to kind of take the next step here, get back over to the presentation. So I wanna talk a little about automation before we run out of time here. So where are you on your automation journey? Uh, Gary, did you wanna put up the poll? And while that's happening, I probably in the text, you know, sending the text to the employees, even that could have more steps, right? Like use, maybe I'm using a service. I could have the list of the employees who need to have get texted. I could have their phone numbers in there. These are all extra pieces of documentation that I could refine and add, right, as needed. Um, in this case, maybe I don't need their phone numbers right now. All right, we're going to hold this open for about five more seconds, and then we will wrap it up. And uh, then I'll share the results. So three, two, and one. Thank you. All right, so, wow, 6% of your, I automate everything. That's amazing. You should be doing this session instead of me. <laughs> Gary, take their names. Um, automate some things, learning to automate. I have nothing automated, want to learn. And some people are saying automation is too much work. And that I do understand. Sometimes if you automate the wrong thing, um, it can be a lot of work. And that's the beauty, I think, of something like a process street or just accepting the fact that some pieces make a lot of sense to automate and some pieces don't. And you want to make what the right, that, that right uh, thing is. But in general, people are automating some, or they're willing to automate um, kind of back and forth there. But I can guarantee you, nobody's automating anything until it's documented. So let's go ahead and uh, just, uh, did I skip? Oh yeah, I skipped one slide too early, sorry about that. Um, so I'm not, let's do a quick automation. So I'm gonna go into process street here to kind of, kind of can see how I talked about how you could do some automation built in, right? So in this case, I wanna do the email to the employees, right? I'm gonna edit this workflow. So we don't want to do all these steps anymore, right? I just want to send them an email right from Process Street. So I'm going to add the email. Send email to employees. Oh, wait. Sorry. I grabbed the wrong thing. Delete. Delete. Send email. So I could have my employees in there. Do you think that here tomorrow? Me. Just pretend that's all my, maybe I have all my employees' email addresses in there. What were your hours last week? And I could actually make this really smart dynamic. Let's say I was in dates with the date of the payroll run. I could put the dates and things like that. Please reply back if your hours worked. All right. And so I can send this out, right? And make this a required step. So instead of having these steps that were just like wait for the responses, the email is now here. You just do the, you just send the email, right? Um, so it's like this, and we can just send email. So now instead of going out to some other email product, right? And typing up emails to all the employees and do that week after week after week, I've just automated that process of sending these employees an email. But maybe I still want to use text. So I'm going to use Zapier for that. So let's do a new Zap. I know I'm getting I'm pushing up against the time here. Sorry. Um, and we're going to do a new one from scratch. So we're going to do. We're going to do process street. So I'm going to do one of. New task is checked when it's checked off. So when something's done or checked off in Process Street, I want Zapier to do something. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to choose my account, continue the workflow. Oh, great. I think this is the one. I didn't give the workflow a name. So I just, it's still called blank workflow. Sorry about that. All right. And the task, all my tasks should pull up here. All right, so we want to text the employees for hours. Continue. I right, test the trigger. So right now I have not uh, finished any tasks. So this is a sample data. 
Okay, so there's that. And let me keep continue. And now the action, I want to send a text. I'm just going to use the basic texting software that's built into Zapier. Let me say continue, continue. I don't care what number they're going to use. It could just be a random number. Or I could just choose, just choose a random number that they use. And then I could say, what are uh, your dollars for speed? And I could even have this sentence populate from Process Street if I wanted to. I could go that deep with it. Okay, and continue. I'm just do a test action. Where's my phone? I should get a text. Okay, I just got a text and it says, what are your hours for last week? It's right there. Okay, I'm gonna publish that. Now I'm gonna go back over to Process Street. I'm gonna publish this. Update the workflow runs. Okay, let me go to there's the link workflow. I'm gonna run this workflow. All right. So this is the one we did at 122. I'm gonna run this workflow. So now I'm in process street, right? So when I set, I okay, delete that text. Right now I have no text on my notifications. When I complete these steps and I say complete task. So it should, Zapier should be watching for that step to be done. And I should get another text that the text just came through. Right. And so Process Street, I automated something using Zapier, but really the Process Street triggered that automation out of there. So let me see, kind of a, I think in conclusion, so you have to document, that's like the most important thing to do in this whole process. Then you refine, like we, like I refined it a little bit, assigning, delegating the steps because if you can't assign it or delegate it to people and they can't do it, you just really can't automate it. So then after you automate it, you want to start using it, right? Like I just, you want to run the payroll. You want to use use your workflow, right? Your, your process, your checklist. Collect feedback along the way and then you just keep refining and automating. Like you can't, maybe, maybe the payroll, there's some manual steps that have to take place, but sending the text to the employees shouldn't have to be a manual step anymore. And you can do those all along the way. Uh, I think there's some time for Q&A. There we go. So I'll look into the questions here. Um, it's ChatGPT. Okay, so somebody has, uh, asked about the security of Process Street. Um, it is just has a. I, I think it's a SOC compliant by the ASCPA, like most things are SOC compliant. Um, but when it comes to confidentiality, you could put your client's data somewhere else. Maybe you have your client's data in a in a secure spreadsheet somewhere, right? You could have Process Street just reference or look at data you have stored somewhere else, and you you can connect through spreadsheets, through direct connections in. Um, but but it is a secure app, and any any I don't think it's any more secure or less secure than a QuickBooks Online or any of the cloud software you're using. Um, people said they think Canopy is amazing. And Canopy is very specific to tax workflows per se. Um, those those engagements. Um, can you automate the email or text? To the employees so it automatically gets sent each week. Yes. So you can automate small tasks like that, or you can automate the whole workflow. Since I know I'm going to run payroll every week, every Monday morning, I want it to kick off that workflow with it being due on Wednesday, right? So I can automatically have some tasks. So I can set up timing, right? So whatever the due date is, so if, if Wednesday's the due date for payroll, 48 hours before send the text to the employees. Right. Or maybe that it's 72 hours before send the text to the employees. So there are ways to automate and customize that um, as needed. Uh, the other one is, are you aware of any documenting service providers that will document your process off of videos you record yourself going through the steps? So there are software packages out there that will record. Um, I'm blinking out on the name of the one. Uh, hopefully, maybe somebody in the chat, if you know the name of 
one of these tools, but you could use it to record like a video. I mean, there's things like Loom, you can record small videos, but some of these other services will record your video and then create steps of uh, based off what you do in the video. Um, we use that sometimes for more complicated things where you just want somebody to watch the video before they do the steps themselves. But again, that's okay because what you're doing is you're taking that, it's documenting your steps, giving you a rough draft to work with, and now you can actually really document it more in a tool like Process Street. Somebody's asking, okay, so I send the text to get the hours, and right now you're correct. I want to automate that coming back into me. And so I could do that probably through a form. You can send forms to people that they could fill out. Um, it could be a table I could drive them to. I just did it, you know, right now, to be honest, my current process is I send them a text. They all text me back their hours and I just open that up and go to on pay and type in the hours. Uh, but yeah, I haven't given it a lot of thought, but there's other ways that I could do that to have them report their hours on a form. And then the form would take that. Uh, unfortunately, I can't take data from Process Street and shove it into the payroll system yet. Uh, but it'd be great if we could do that one day through Zapier. Scribe, now thank you everybody in the audience. Scribe is that one that does, it records your video of what you're doing on your computer and then it can create some steps. And then I'm assuming once you have that, you copy and paste those steps and other things like a Process Street. Uh, is there any other questions? I've got one for you. Yeah. And that is, um, so this wasn't really a demo of Process Street. That wasn't, um, I was just kind of reading through some of the chat, some of the questions. And how did you end up actually using Process Street? How'd you, end, how'd you wind, narrow that? Because there's, you know, hundreds, I don't know if there's hundreds of options, but there's a lot of options. So I found Process Street like eight or nine years ago. And it was, I, I, where I think the main two reasons I settled on it at the time was it has a very deep integration to Zapier, right? Because in Zapier, I need to be able to get to every step, right? There's a lot of things that connect. Everybody's done this with connections to QuickBooks. We sync with QuickBooks and you do it and all it does is sync customers one way or it only it doesn't bring their addresses in or, or it won't send the invoice or whatever it might be. You see that a lot with all tools. And so Process Street always had a very deep integration to Zapier, which allowed me to, okay, that means it's scalable. Cause then I can, on the other side on Zapier, I can do anything I want with it. Um, but that's how I kind of settled on it at the time. I don't know what other tools I looked at in, you know, eight or nine years ago. I know there's other things that have popped up since, but I, I mean, I'd argue between a tool like Airtable, Zapier and Process Street, you really could have a pretty powerful tech stack that's arguably doing any, like all, some of the automation, these new tech startups, you know, that a billion dollar valuations have, I argue that you could almost build what they're building with just Process Street, Zapier, and uh, Airtable, I think. Right. And I think, uh, too, I've been dabbling a little bit. I, I think what's, um, if anybody is hesitant, right, of, of stepping into this, it's pretty self-guiding and self-explanatory in most cases, at least the, the things that I've done. You know, not a lot, but the little things I've done, it's, you know, it does take a little bit of time. And it does take some commitment. And, and I think thinking through exactly what your end goal is with that process. And you know, I think the more detailed you can get in the process, the better, because you're going to have a better product from start to finish is uh, kind of my experience. But I mean, you don't have to, the thing is you, people try to engineer it perfectly from day one, yep. and you don't have to. Just document something. That's what I was trying to illustrate with the ChatGPT. I would have started a blank page for 25 minutes. Instead, right. in 25 seconds, I have something to start with. I stick it in and I kind of work from there. And I could actually, you know, as anybody's fiddled with like ChatGPT and those types of tools, I could have massaged that more. So it was actually cleaner and better before I copied and pasted it in. But I think sometimes when you're on a demo like this, you can only do what you can do. You know? Yeah. And so actually, so it brings up a question just before we wrap it up. And that is, so let's say, so I, I built, I know where I want to go. And I've kind of thrown some things together, and but I need to do a little improvement here and there. Are these tools set up to where you can kind of go back in and, and make a change to between step five and seven? Yeah, we probably seven? we probably change our process street for our podcast production. We probably it's getting less and less, but we edit it three four times a day sometimes. Okay. Uh, because as you do other things, you discover, you automate, we move the process, we improve. Hey, we're going to automate that. Well, if you automate that, that means 
this step is slightly different now down the funnel, but it's fully changeable and you can update current workflows, future workflows. It's super powerful from that point standpoint. I mean, frankly, like if Process Street didn't exist tomorrow, I don't know what we do. <laughs> like, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pen and paper. Um, so, all right. Well, David, thank you so much. And Murph is going to be mad at me if I don't. Um, I don't mention that this session will be uh, included on our 2024, so thinking ahead, uh, uh, Top 100 Pro Advisors Award program, so or at least through the application and the application process. So make a note if you have, uh, if you were here, which you will hear me if you if you are here, and because uh, again, this this session will be one of the many sessions where you can add into next year's application so you can get uh, get credit for that through that process. So with that said, it's 4.30. We will wrap it up. David, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you, you uh, flying in hot from, from Italy and uh, coming in and, and sharing your knowledge. And we certainly do appreciate it. There will be an email that goes out to everybody. It's probably going to be two days before you see any kind of follow-up from us with the links to YouTube, but I did put those in the chat and then to the um, to the slide deck itself. So again, thank you. And we will see everyone tomorrow for day two of Future Forward. Thank you. Thank you.